Most of the things we do, we don't have to think about it because it's something that basically comes automatic for us after doing it time and time again, just like driving. You've done it so many times that you don't even notice it anymore because it becomes an automatic habit. But not all habits are good things, such as binge watching or just shopping all day. And it goes the same with what we do with our money. Let me share with you five self-sabotaging money habits that are keeping you poor. So let's get it started. Hey guys, I'm Muneeb. I started out with humble beginnings. I became a multimillionaire by the time I was in my early 20s. I've started multiple brick and mortar businesses with billions of dollars in sales. I'm just here to help you with your success journey. The first self-sabotaging habit that you need to cut off is paying yourself last. When people get their paychecks, it's easy to swipe cards left and right and buy stuff. That would make you feel good after working a whole couple of weeks. But a lot of times, it leads to overspending and leaving you with little to no money at the end. If you really want to get rich, you need to pay yourself first and not last. You need to be the first one with a handout to yourself. There's a great quote from the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett himself, that sums this all up. He said, do not save what is left after spending, but instead spend what is left after saving. What Buffett is telling us is that you always prioritize savings first when you get that paycheck because savings is what helps you secure your life and make you wealthier. So whatever is left in your pocket, that's money that you can spend on stuff that you like and want. But before you save, you shouldn't even think about it. There's also Parkinson's law that we can all relate to, this one poor habit. When a person has so much time on their hands, it takes a lot of effort to finish a task because they can't use their time properly. Compared to someone who is on a deadline. They have to use a lot of focus to go ahead and finish that task. The same is true for money. When you have a whole lot of cash laying around unused, chances are you're going to spend it on your wants. That's why it's always recommended to set aside for your savings. So as soon as you get paid, it's already done. So you can lessen the chances of overspending and forgetting to give money for your future self. You have to treat your savings like a bill. If you miss out, there's going to be penalties, like you're making it hard for yourself to get that dream house. The second habit you should stop doing is keeping up with the friends that have expensive lifestyles. How many times have you been swayed by your friends trying to go out to the next Michelin star restaurant they saw? Or go out to VIP clubs in your city when you're trying your best to save money? If you have friends that are wealthier or richer or have different lifestyles, you have to learn to say no when they ask you to go out. It's always okay to say, I can't because I really don't have the money to spend. And if they refuse, then you don't really deserve friends like that. Sure, you might have fun when you try to keep up with your friends in the short period, but what will happen if you're late on your credit card bill or your landlord doesn't get their rent on time. Your goal should be attaining a life free of financial worries, not going YOLO or not getting stressed out the following day because you overspent yourself. I'm pretty sure that being in debt because you had the fear of missing out or YOLOing is not worth it. There were plenty of times when I went out in the beginning and didn't spend a lot of money. And truth be told, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money to have fun. The truth is that a lot of Americans are in debt and you may not even know what the financial situation of your friends are. They could have expensive tastes, but they could be in debt hugely and they're trying to drag you along with them. So whatever your friends are trying to sell you or whatever you see on social media might just be an illusion of their lifestyle and not their real life. You might be buying into a lifestyle that's not even real. So if you try to live a life like theirs, you might not ever get out of debt. And would you rather be someone who likes to look rich or someone who actually is rich? I'm sure the answer is the later one. So if you want to become more financially independent, don't give in to peer pressure. Speak up for yourself and stand your ground and be honest with what your goals are. Be honest with you simply can't afford it. It's just fine for you to do so. It's just that simple. Now the third habit that's keeping you poor is overusing your credit cards. I always say that credit cards are great tools as long as you have the discipline to use them. You can get free flights and great discounts and cash back on your groceries. But if you keep giving in to every sale that you get emailed about, then you might end up overspending that which you can't really afford and it's gonna end up hurting your savings anyway. It's easy to get fooled by pesky text messages and notifications about sales and emails that all get you to use your cards so that you can get free stuff and extra points and free flights but if you can't really afford the payment it doesn't help you in the first place to stop the habit of using cards all the time try changing it up a little bit and try spending some cash sometimes on certain things like small expenses such as commuting expenses coffee or food when you start to use cash you realize there's real money involved but use your card on anything over a hundred dollars if you really want the points 
put on small stuff, start to use cash so you understand what's going on. By doing this, you're forcing yourself to buy things that you can afford while you avoid overspending. The fourth habit that you should stop is having disorganized finances. If your finances are all over the place, it's going to be hard for you to keep up and you might miss a payment on your bills. That's why I say always create a budget because not only will it keep you updated with your bills, but it'll also help you see how much you can actually afford. There are plenty of tools to create a budget. You can make a spreadsheet, you can track your finances on different apps, and if you want to go real old school, you can even have a shoebox and a notepad and list down everything and keep receipts. Or you can be a lot more technologically savvy and use apps like Mint, Good Budget, Every Dollar. These apps can sync in with your bank accounts and help you pay your bills on time and having a budget can really help you get into the habit of being organized and regularly checking your money to avoid any unnecessary debts and expenses i always say if you don't visit your money daily your money doesn't visit you you need to know exactly what your financial state and status is every single day because things can start to add up really quickly and just a real quick break from the topic i'm giving away a free ebook to help you on your journey of financial freedom if you sign up using the link down below you'll be able to get it directly sent to you and the fifth self-sabotaging habit that you should stop doing is waiting too long to start to invest a lot of times people are waiting for that right opportunity to invest and that leads to procrastination and a lot of other excuses about not investing you might say well I have debts to pay or I don't have enough money or you know maybe I'm waiting for that side hustle to kick in or when is it a good entry point to hit the stock market or crypto but the thing is there's never a perfect time but right now even experts say that it's absolutely hard to time any market and that's why they always say to dollar cost average your buys instead and if you know people who are invested earlier than you great most likely they're far richer than you by now oh well you might have some friends who invested five years ago in crypto and they're absolutely worth nothing right now so you never really know if you invested in the s p 500 for example in 2017 the price was 2400 and now it's 3800 okay what do you do just cry about not getting in the market at that time i always hear people oh could have bought tesla i could have bought amazon well you didn't you need to buy now at some other company that's going to turn into the next big thing. You can double and triple, but you can't get any of it if you don't enter the marketplace at some time. The same kind of things happened to me when my friends were looking for the perfect opportunity to buy real estate. And I just kept buying it. It didn't matter what the economy was doing or how much money. I just kept buying it. And after a long period of time, I was at a place where I didn't really need to work again. So set the lame excuses apart and start with just a little bit of money. You can never say that you don't have any money to invest because there's fractional interest you can buy there's penny stocks you can buy there's all kinds of different modalities that you can invest in just set aside as little as two and a half five percent ten percent of whatever money you have left over and don't tell me some bs about i have no money at all and cut out on your you know smoking or coffee drinking there's always something you can cut out and invest that money in something else and you see that money rise so no matter what your life is right now you could find some money to either sell something or save something and if you have no job or anything else you know I get it comments about this stuff all the time then go get a job right and if you just can't save any money then cut a meal but do something to push yourself through the comfort zone just add this to your priority list of expenses it's part of savings and you know earning money and growing your nest egg what's important is that you start to invest as soon as possible so those are the five disruptive habits that are keeping you poor and far from the goal of becoming financially independent. Remember, stop paying yourself last. Always prioritize savings like it's a bill that needs to be paid on time. Stop trying to keep up with your friends that have expensive tastes. You don't have to keep up with a trend or keep up with their spending habits to be cool. Don't overuse your credit cards just to get reward points and stop having disorganized finance. Know where your money is and how much you're earning and spending all the time. Always budget and track everything to stop overspending and don't wait for that perfect opportunity to invest your money so that your dollars can work for you the best time to do it is n-o-w also what you can do now is to hit that like and subscribe button and help my channel so that we can share our content with more people worldwide thank you for watching if you want to learn more about good habits check this video out powerful billionaire habits that could change your life